Hello, and welcome to my talk on a fast atmospheric radiation code for general circulation models. Um, my name is Charles Kapczynski. I'm a software engineer at Caltech, and I'm going to be presenting uh, on the work that's part of uh, the Climate Modeling Alliance. Uh, we're a distributed team uh, across Caltech, MIT, NGIT, the Naval Postgraduate School, and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Um, and we're developing a climate model uh, from scratch uh, in Julia. Okay, so let's get started. So first I'll give a little bit of background. Um, RRTM and RRTMG uh, stands for Rapid and Accurate Radiative Transfer Model. The G stands for Global or General Circulation Models. Um, so these are radiative transfer codes. And I'm going to focus on RTMG since we're interested in applying this to a climate model. Um, so climate models uh, require computing radiative fluxes. They enter the energy, uh, the energy equation. Um, and as radiation uh, transmits through the atmosphere, uh, there's absorption and scattering along the way. Uh, and in addition, uh, the absorption and scattering process depend on the radiation spectrum. Uh, so that's wavelength and frequency. Uh, and the spectral dependence is very dense, and so it's too expensive to fully resolve the, spectral, uh, the spectrum in climate models um, because, uh, in general, radiation uh, computations in climate models are very expensive. And so RRTMG uh, solves this by computing the radiative fluxes using a Kind of bulk approximation to estimate the unresolved uh, spectral dependence. And the accuracy of RTMG is tested against what are called line by line radiative transfer codes, um, which do fully resolve the spectral dependence. Um, so RTMG is a pretty big code. Um, it's written in Fortran. Uh, it was written in, in the 90s. Um, and next I'll talk about uh, work that is built on top of this. So enter RTE plus RTMGP. Uh, the P here stands for parallel. Um, RTMGP uh, is is roughly the the same uh, has roughly has the same functionality as uh, RTMG, um, except that it performs the calculations for you know atmospheric columns uh, in parallel. Um, and this code is also written in Fortran, but it has uh, several advantages. Um, it's more modular. It has uh, useful data structures and abstractions. Um, it's on GitHub. And uh, I think maybe also very importantly, it decouples uh, two fundamentally different problems. Um, and the first, the first problem is mapping uh, atmospheric conditions to optical properties. And the second problem is computing uh, radiative fluxes uh, by solving the radiative transfer equation, or the RTE, uh, given a set of optical properties. Um, so RTMGP is uh, about 14,000 uh, 14, lines of code. And uh, you know, because, of, uh, because of this, or perhaps despite of this, uh, uh, code size, we felt it was easier to directly translate the code as opposed to writing this from scratch. Um, and we kind of had no choice because we uh, want our code to be able to run on the CPU uh, and the GPU, and uh, so we couldn't call um, uh, the Fortran code from our uh, climate model because it's in Julia and we have these kind of uh, memory layout requirements that uh, wouldn't really make this possible. Uh, so enter rtmgp.jl. Um, as I said, this is a direct translation of rtmgp. Uh, it took two software engineers about two weeks to do the translation and to kind of check for the correctness. correctness. Um, so we were kind of pleased with how quickly we were able to uh, get things into Julia. Um, and we're still kind of doing refactoring. The refactoring process, um, I'd say maybe most of the refactoring took maybe one to two months, but as I said, it's still kind of ongoing. Um, and the code is on GitHub. Uh, we have CI, we have BORS enabled. Um, we have decent code coverage. Uh, we're still kind of working on our documentation. Um, I'm kind of in love with our, uh, our logo. 
Um, this is from uh, a NASA movie that showed uh, images of the sun in different filters. And as soon as I saw this video, I thought I know exactly what the logo will be. So uh, yeah, very, very happy about that. Um, so we plan to use our TMGP.jl in climatemachine.jl. Um, and as I said, we uh, plan to have this run on CPUs and on GPUs. So let me give a little bit of a walkthrough. Okay, so the basic, uh, you know, 10,000 foot view of, of how this works is uh, it solves these two problems. So the first one is, uh, you know, computing the optical properties given the atmospheric conditions. So we have an atmospheric state type, which we first create given the uh, pressure, the temperature, and gas concentrations. Um, and then once we have the atmospheric state uh, and, you know, whichever type of uh, optical properties we want to use. Um, and then the third item for, uh, for computing the optical properties is uh, what's called a K distribution. And this is basically uh, reference data uh, over which we're doing effectively like 3D interpolation. Um, and then we have this uh, gas optics uh, method, which calls the core, you know, using dispatch calls the correct um, uh, method for um, computing the optical properties. Um, so after that point, we have our optical depth, or, uh, or in the case of the two-stream, we have optical depth, single scattering albedo, and um, asymmetry factor. These are all uh, kind of properties of the optical properties. Um, then we solve the radiative transfer equation by first um, creating uh, broadband fluxes, and then calling RTE shortwave or RTE longwave. Uh, and we call this with the optical properties, with the fluxes, and then also some additional arguments like boundary conditions and potentially the, uh, the solar zenith angle. Um, and these, these also use dispatch based on the type of optical properties that we pass in. Okay. And last part. Uh, okay, so uh, for future improvements, we uh, still need to extend this to GPU uh, to make a GPU compatible, so we want to use CUDA and kernel abstractions. Um, another thing that we want to improve on is uh, we want to abstract the RTE problem for improved memory layout uh, flexibility. And then uh, one of the last things we would like to do is uh, try and use neural networks to map the atmospheric conditions to optical properties. This would effectively remove the 3D interpolation data. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for your time.